May I preach to you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So something that I've come to learn is that there is no more honest reaction to a gift than the reaction of a child. Because I remember when I was growing up, one of the things that my mother and father imparted to me vehemently during the Christmas season is that when you go to your grandparents' house, I guarantee you there's, there's going to be some gifts there that you like. But there's also going to be some gifts there that you're going to scratch your head. And so no matter what the gift is, just say thank you, smile, and that's it. That's all you have to do. And woe to the one who did not follow this advice. <laughs> and so you fast forward a few decades, and I'm at my parents' house, and now they're the grandparents, and I'm not going to say it was my children, just some children that I know. <laughs> and they're four and two, so you can really kind of excuse it. But you had to talk with them. And so they begin to tear open the, the wrapping paper and they open it up and the reaction is priceless. It's sadness mixed almost with horror because who in their right mind as a gift for Christmas to a child gives underwear? <laughs> And so at that moment, I hoped that my talk had taken root. It had not. Because immediately the older one took the gift, placed it behind them over their shoulder, and moved on to the next piece of wrapping paper that had to be opened. There is no more honest reaction for children, and I think even for human beings, than when we receive a gift especially when it's very unexpected. And so today, I think about the reaction that's found in the gospel, both for Mary and her family, and for Joseph. Because each one of them had very specific ideas. They had a vision for their life that was going to take place a certain way. And I think it's a vision that many of us can relate to. We think about getting married, having children, kind of having quiet, ordinary lives. And then here comes the unexpected. Mary is told, not only are you being asked to bear a child, even though you're not married, she didn't understand that right away, but also that your child, the one that you will bear, will be none other than the Son of God. Now imagine having to have that conversation as Mary with anyone and getting them to believe you. That must have been incredibly difficult, especially when talking to her own parents, St. Anne and St. Joachim. And it doesn't end there because when Joseph finds out, what's his reaction? Heartbreak. He deeply loved Mary. And to find the possibility that she might have been unfaithful just absolutely destroys his heart. But because he's a righteous man, it says in the gospel, that he's not going to cause any scandal to her because in that time period and under that law, really bad things could happen to Mary. She could be stoned to death. He says, I'm not going to do that to her. I'll just divorce her quietly. And then he receives a dream from an angel that says, I know this is unexpected. I know this is not what you had planned for. But this is a wonderful thing. This is a wonderful opportunity for the whole world. And what you're being asked to do may be incredibly difficult, but it is a gift. And so... Joseph and Mary have to make two very important decisions. 
are they going to say yes or are they going to say no? Because sometimes I think because we've heard this story so often, we forget that both Mary and Joseph had a choice. They could have said, no thanks. I really don't want to get on this ride. I really don't want to be a part of this plan. I just want to live a quiet, ordinary life. And thank you, Mr. Angel. See you later. And Joseph could have said, this is a strange dream. What in the world did I eat last night? And said, I don't want to be a part of this plan. This is too much, Lord, for you to ask of me. And I don't want to do it. But of course we know the answer. We know that both Mary and Joseph say yes. And so through that, they become our models for how to deal with when the unexpected happens to us. Because throughout our life, I'm sure that there are moments where God has done the unexpected for us and done the unexpected to us. And he's asked us to do something that we have wanted to say, not my first choice, Lord. This is not the plan that I would have put together for my life. And in response, God reaches out to us and says, I know it's not what you expected, but this is what I'm calling you to do. See, I think there's a great temptation that we face as Christians, which is to live those quiet, ordinary lives, to not make a lot of ripples in the world. When in actuality, in reality, God is calling us to be like Mary and Joseph and accept the plan which he has started since creation and has been pushing since the fall of man. During this entire Advent season, we've talked about preparation and preparation and preparation. As if it's just for this one night, this one day of Christmas. But that's not really all that we've been preparing for. We've been preparing for so much more. And so the lesson that I'd like for us to take with us today is, first of all, to trust God when God asks us to do the unexpected. A personal example for me was, I remember when I began the discernment process and I had everything planned out. I was going to go to this school, which was going to let me stay in Tampa locally, and then I was going to graduate at this time, and then I was going to tell the bishop, you're going to lay hands on me on this day, and uh, well, he had other thoughts. And then I remember coming with my wife and sitting in his office and he says, congratulations, you're moving to Tennessee. And I said, I've never been to Tennessee. He says, well, there's a first time for everything. I said, but it's cold up there. He said, buy a jacket. He said, but it's far away. They have planes and automobiles. You'll be okay. Because that wasn't the choice that I would have made for myself. But after three years of there and coming home, I realized that God was speaking to me through him and saying, this is the sacrifice and where I want you to be. And so I wonder if each one of us were to reflect on our life about some of the choices that we've had to make or maybe we're being asked to make right now. Are we afraid to say yes because it's unexpected and not what we would choose? The second lesson that I want us to take away is to be the unexpected for other people. Because a lot of people in this world have set incredibly low expectations. I expect for, almost nowadays for people to be rude or mean or callous just because of the way the world has become. But our expectations should be higher. We should expect kindness in the world and love and generosity. And we should begin those expectations through our own actions. And so in our workplaces, in our schools, in our places where we volunteer, in our churches, how often 
Do we let our low expectations take over and not truly expect the way that God wants the world to happen to happen? I had a friend who, who exemplified this for me when he said, you know, Alex, I was driving down the road and this woman just, I mean, she blatantly cut me off. It's like almost she was trying to cut me off in the car. And then we stopped at a light and she looked behind me with this idea of fear like, what's going to happen? Is this guy going to give me that, you know, wonderful hand signal that some people give? Is he going to get out of the car? And I leaned out the window and I said in my loudest voice, God bless you. And she just sat there stunned. She didn't know what to do. Because she expected something mean. Her expectations for humanity were down here. And he said, I wanted to do that and raise those expectations by raising them within myself. So it's the fourth Sunday of Advent, which means that we're all getting ready for our Christmas celebrations, which means that maybe family is coming into town, maybe friends we haven't seen in a long time are coming together. And just like Thanksgiving, we get a lot of these tensions that, that happen when people who haven't been together in a long time sometimes get together. And so my prayer is that as we finish our Christmas preparations and get ready to celebrate, that we set our expectations high and that we become the unexpected for others so that when they see us they may not be expecting a smile but they get one they may not be expecting courtesy but they receive it they may not be expecting love and an invitation to come to worship but we will give it because wonderful and amazing things happen when God chooses to do the unexpected. And we get to do wonderful and amazing things when we say to the Lord, I will be the unexpected Lord in this world for you. Amen.